Los Angeles turns out in force to scream a welcome to two of the war's outstanding heroes, General Blood and Guts Patton and General Jimmy Doolittle. Along the route, nearly two million people turn out to acclaim the man who beat the Germans at their own game of mechanized warfare. A given prominent display for Doolittle as well as G.I. Joe needs your help. General Doolittle, Tokyo bound again, has the right slant when he says, I'd like to form a team now. The home team and the field team. And to say that if you will furnish us the supplies, if you will furnish the ships, if you will deliver the supplies, we, the field team, will see that they're properly used and bring this war to a prompt conclusion. Thank you. As part of the campaign to cut off and trap 200,000 Jap troops in Southeast Asia, bombers saturate an enemy-held junction of the Rangoon-Mandalay Railroad in Burma. The next stop on the milk run is the main Jap headquarters for central Burma. The bombardiers mean business. Twenty-four Yank bombers pound at suicidal enemy holdouts on Mindanao in the Philippines, striking with 300 pounders. Though the weather is bad, necessitating two bomb runs, hits on the target are 95% perfect, as these Air Force pictures show. In China, also, our tireless air forces hammer at Jap supply bases. 500-pound incendiary clusters destroy valuable military supplies. Part of the drive to cut the enemy corridor to Indochina and Malaya. A pattern of death for Japan. John W. Snyder, Federal Loan Administrator, tells of Reconstruction Finance Plan. As Administrator of the Federal Loan Agency, I have three major programs underway. Probably the greatest is that of the disposal of the huge war surpluses. I assure you that the Reconstruction Finance Corporation will approach this in a most realistic manner. During its useful life, the RFC mushroomed into a number of subsidiaries, which were probably necessary to accomplish its many wartime undertakings. Today, with the end of the war coming nearer, it becomes appropriate and timely to consolidate these various activities into the RFC itself. A program of major importance is that of assuring all business big and little, that ample credit is available to assist in a rapid and constructive reconversion into peacetime production. Things are looking up for civilian car buyers, but don't rush out to get one now. The new Ford is just a tantalizing glimpse of things to come. This sample, handmade, will not go into production for two or three months, and Mr. Average will not get a car for a year or two. But then, you'll have your choice of a four-door or a two-door model like these, and other manufacturers will be after your business, too. When Detroit overnight geared to war production, civilians were never forgotten. See you in the country. Red Square in Moscow blazes with color as the Russian capital turns out en masse to celebrate its first May Day in four years. It's the greatest May Day in Russian military history, with Nazi Germany beaten to her knees. Marshal Stalin, from the top of Lenin's tomb, reviews the big parade. It has been assembling since the celebration started at midnight. 
American officers also enjoy the display of military splendor. Grim Japanese are awed by the tremendous spectacle of power staged by Stalin's troops rumbling by. The ever-present American Jeep joins the procession, and the striking power of this great war machine is typified by these huge new mortars, the world's heaviest artillery, unveiled for the first time. The monster parade brings out all that is modern in war equipment, an historic day for Russia and the Red Army. Sixty-five thousand turn out at Churchill Downs for the 71st Kentucky Derby, and a record amount is put down on the three-year-olds in this classic of the American turf. Hoop Jr. is a favorite horse as they parade to the post. And when they get away, just a touch of the whip sends him into the lead. Hoop Jr. is never headed from now on in. The three-year-old who cost 10,000 as a yearling is on his way to pick up a neat 64,000. In the back stretch, Potterlock begins to move up, but he's no threat to Jockey or Caro's mount. None of the other 15 horses can touch the easy running coat. Coming into the stretch, it takes little urging from Akaro for the hoop to walk away with the race in his feed bag. He's ringing up the biggest margin of victory since Whirlaway took the derby. Six lengths. Lucky backers collected 370 for every dollar they gambled on Hoop Jr., who carried Arcaro to the jockey's third derby win. Nice rolling, Hoop. 